What is going on, guys? Check it out, check it out. Oh, shit, hold on, let me turn my computer down. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, we got, got the chat going already. Okay. Uh, the average ones, yes, now we have to worry about the craziest ones getting more radicalized. True. Assuming, yeah, assuming you guys are talking about Q. Yeah, that is, uh, one of the biggest issues, I would say. But so, I, uh, seeing that Vice, uh, put out this new documentary, and it seems really, really interesting. I skimmed through, like, five minutes of it, and then I was just like, well, might as well, we might as well stream this. I mean, it's right up our alley, you know what I mean? Uh, it seems, but it seems pretty good. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail. Uh, and basically, I think pretty much the narrative of the documentary is they're trying to figure out who exactly started this whole thing and kind of how it all came together. You know what I mean? The new date for the people is Mar apparently March 4th. Yep. Yeah, that's the... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to put together a video about that. That March 4th thing, it's basically like a sovereign citizen uh, thing. You know, like sovereign citizens have like this weird thing about the 14th Amendment. And that's where the whole uh, government contract w where Trump will actually be the 19th president because we were owned by, we were actually a corporation. It's, it's some goofy shit. You watched it all? Ward, coming through with the 100 bits. Thanks a lot, man. Much appreciated. Uh, haven't watched it yet. Yeah, it just came out today. I actually thought it came out tomorrow. And then somebody, I think it was, I don't know if it was on Twitter or if it was on uh uh, TikTok was like, hey, Vice just, uh, this thing just came out. And I was like, oh shit, I thought that came out tomorrow. But this is like a precursor, and then the actual thing comes out tomorrow. So, um, yeah. But, okay, while we, uh, while we wait for people to pop in here real quick, I do want to just go over a couple, let's go over a couple things. First, because I just find this absolutely hilarious. I don't know if you, any of you guys ever heard of the Walk Away campaign. Turn this blue light off. The walk away campaign is this guy. Where is it at? Brandon Straka. This gentleman right here. The walk away campaign uh, was a campaign started in 2018 by this guy to get Democrats to leave the party, you know, walk away. Well, this idiot. Walkaway founder Brandon Straka arrested for capital riots after his own family called the FBI on him. Yet another far-right extremist has been arrested for his role in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Brandon, Stalker was uh, Brandon Straka was charged with three counts by federal prosecutors impeding law enforcement during a civil disorder, entering restricted grounds, and disorderly conduct with intent to disturb a hearing before Congress. He has been arrested. Straka founded the Walk Away campaign that sought to encourage Democrats to leave the Democratic Party and spoke at the Stop the Steal rally in D.C. The day after the riot, Straka criticized those on the right who were attempting to blame the riots on Antifa. So who is one of the guys that's like, no, that was patriots. We stormed the Capitol. We did that. But anyway, the FBI said that the witness was a relative of Straka, pointed investigators to a video on Twitter after the video was deleted. Uh, the relative let the agent know that there was a copy of the post on YouTube. In the video, Straka can be seen wearing the same clothes that he had worn the previous day while speaking at the rally. So that just shows you how, like, either how lost in the sauce these guys are, or just how, like, privileged they, you know, like, like how they just feel like they are just really in the right. You know what I mean? Like, we can do no wrong. Law enforcement's on our side. Trump has our back. And this moron wears the exact same outfit to, I you know, commit a crime. I don't know. I, I, if I was going to commit a crime, I probably wouldn't wear the same outfit that I wore the day before at a public speaking event. Just me. I don't know. What do I know, though? But uh, the funniest, like, the funniest thing, though, first of all, this guy's a total tool. Total tool, tool grifter. Uh, you should, if you ever want to see a good, uh, debate. Look up him and Sam Cedar. Sam Cedar went on his podcast, just absolutely destroyed him. But I think it's so funny because Brandon started this movement in 2018 before the midterms. So since he started the walk away campaign, 
uh, Republicans have lost the House, the Senate, the presidency, and he's in jail. So I don't, I'm not sure if he could have done any worse than he, what he did. So I, that's, that's the grand slam of screw ups right there, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, anyway, okay, we got some, uh, we got some people in here. Where can you watch the Vice documentary? Yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stream it right now. We just, uh, I was waiting for people to hop in here. So I figured I'd talk, I, I, we would laugh at Brandon Straka real quick. All you guys on TikTok, the link to my YouTube and Twitch is in the bio. Um, let me get, let me get, uh, if you guys want to come over. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear it okay, the sound, but, uh, yeah, let's get her started. This is the search for QAnon. QAnon is the single greatest information operation in the history of humanity. Our kids are not for sale! Our kids are not for sale! You know, currency of the elite basically is babies. Drinking children's blood, adrenochrome. This stuff has been going on. Where we go on? That guy's a cop. We go on! There was a new phenomenon this week, something called QAnon. What exactly is QAnon, and why is it making headlines now? On Saturday, October 28th, 2017, an anonymous post on the message board Calm Before the Storm on 4chan. 4chan, which is an anonymous online message board. Claimed the arrest of Hillary Clinton was scheduled for the following Monday. The anonymous user claimed to be a high-level government insider, but signed the post only Q, a nod to Q-level security clearance granted by the Department of Energy. An army of digital soldiers quickly began to research the questions that Q posed. And Trump began retweeting accounts associated with Q. Our president just gave the most damning Q proof ever. The president condemns and denounces any group that would incite violence. This is a militant group. There's been two murders tied yeah. to this group this year alone. QAnon is a military operation. That's why they're not allowed to talk about it. As Q supporters started running for Congress. Did you guys know that, though, that uh, Q clearance is not even like military? It's, it's, it's Department of Energy. Like they don't even they don't even get that part of the grift right. Uh, so when they say military and then they talk about Q clearance, it's like a completely different ball game. And headlines about Q invaded everyone's social media feeds. Millions around the globe began asking their family and friends. What, what is, is QAnon? QAnon? Fuck if I know. We have an army of digital soldiers. You're dealing with one of the most experienced spies you're ever going to meet. It's meant to be kind of like a big joke. It's called QAnon, a fringe conspiracy theory that some have likened to an online religion. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they liked me very and much. And then I just totally created it. As long as these drops are still continuing, it matters a lot. Because who's writing them and who is having all this influence? What exactly is QAnon and why is it making headlines now? My entire life, I've been a bit of a political nerd. So unsurprisingly, I've spent my career on campaigns or working on public policy at think tanks in Washington, DC. Growing up in Israel, I saw what it looks like to be at war with your neighbor. I became a filmmaker to tell stories that positively address ideological divides. Back in 2012, I helped launch a YouTube channel. Soul Pancake. Soul Pancake. Where our mission was to make videos that inspire deeper conversations than you can typically find online. After the 2016 election, a friend talked me into quitting my stable job and spending a really weird couple of years making a documentary with him. Active measures? Yeah, no. You've seen it? When Marley came to I LA for her film launch, launch, we discovered we were both fascinated by a new phenomenon on the scene. An anonymous figure known as Q connected both of our worlds, the internet and politics. 
I wanted to know Q's identity, who the person behind the cloak was, because it seemed like a political operation designed to weaponize divisions and foment distrust in institutions. I recognize the same tools of online radicalization that were being used abroad were now being used in America. What I didn't see happening in the coverage around Q was a desire to better understand why Q exists, and as a result, things have become much more hostile. Which is a threat to our national security and democracy as a whole. So in the middle of a pandemic, Bayan and I packed our bags and headed out to find Q. Nearly everyone has a friend or family member who suddenly began posting about Q in the last few years, and I'm no exception. We're starting my, in Tampa, old, Florida, my, my meeting with Bayan's friend JT to learn how a former Bernie supporter took a turn and has devoted his career to Q. It feels like the perfect starting point to get an understanding of what Q is and how it's attracted so many people. I've seen this guy a lot before, and he is like the perfect example of how close, how close these people are to being on like the same side as lefties, but then at the very last second, they just fear hard right. It, like this guy is the perfect example. This he like writes songs about Q and stuff. My friend JT is a talented musician who was inspired by Q's posts and started writing music about Q. So I took my hair down. It looks, I mean, <laughs> it looks very majestic. One thing that we connected on early on was that you were a Bernie guy in 15, right? Yes. And the reason why, because he, he, he said, break the establishment. How did you go from Bernie to Trump? Bernie got kicked out of the running. I was furious at Hillary. And then Trump came out. He started saying the things that I liked about Bernie, which was fighting against the establishment. Our movement is about replacing a failed and corrupt, and when I say corrupt, I'm talking about totally corrupt, political establishment. So how did you find Q? Jordan Sather, who I love, literally probably the two days after Q posted, I saw his feed about it, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Q information, all of this is just yeah, going to be uh, mainly questions I'm going to throw out there and thoughts for you guys to ponder. It was so it's so strategic to, like, reel you in, you know? Right. You Like, they put in a code, and you're like, what the hell does that mean? And then you figure out what it means, and you go, whoa, they figured out what it means. <laughs> it's a game. But it's game with insider information that you can't get from anywhere else. It's like going to college for... And that's really where the term LARP comes in, because these people really, really feel like they're part of some insider group, and that this whole thing is just a game. Like, they th really think they're playing a game, with the outcome being, like, massive death on their enemies. The deep state. So it wasn't like a moment, it was kind of like gradual and over time that you discovered it, it. Listen, anybody that is involved in the Q movement that can't admit it's a PSYOP is too blind to see that it's a PSYOP. It is a PSYOP. What's a PSYOP? It's a psychological operation. A PSYOP, or psychological operation, is usually a military-led strategy to influence a population's emotions, motives, and objective reasoning. After we finished our interview in the, the parking lot, full of I hopped in the car with JT to catch up. Right after 2016, I was reunited with one of my best friends. We, had, we started a band. It was my dream to be playing with him again. I had everything lined up and and in the way you know i thought that i wanted my career to be and and uh and then this happened and my eyes were open to something that i knew existed and i couldn't put my finger on it and it gave me an opportunity to uh start to put my finger on it in 2018 jt was inspired by q and started writing songs for the movement the songs all came out and um, beginning in 2019, he just said, nah, dude, I can't be, I can't be around that. Unfortunately for JT, his best friend was not as inspired by Q. I had, to, I, of course, I love the guy, I, I honor him. And it was almost like an ultimatum, like I could put it away 
I could like say, well, this isn't worth, um, you know, just writing music about all the time. And for some, you know, reason, I, I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to take the hard road. Where we go one, we go all. And that's the, like the crazy thing is this guy had like a band. He was at least touring. I don't know if they were any good, but just a couple months into this LARP, he decided to ditch his bandmates who were like, hey man, I don't know if I can do the whole child sacrifice cabal deal. And I think that's what happens with so many people is they, they get so deep into it. They're so invested in this thing. And then the people around them are, start to push them away and they're just completely fine with it. They just roll with it. And that's what makes it so hard to get them out. Um, because, well, I'm a rebel <laughs> and uh, nobody's going to tell me what to do. We pulled over to eat and JT got an alert on his phone. Hey, what just happened? Yeah, so dude, like uh, Q just posted, says that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln, November 1863, together we win. The question I get from people that don't really know about Q, but just have heard of him is, you know, it does make you wonder why they would try so hard to make it sound awful and bad and evil. And it's like they, thousands of articles, thousands of articles written about, about it as a, insane and evil and uh, extremists. Conspiracy group extremists. whose theories make alien invader claims sound mainstream. Falsely claim that the world is run by a satanic cabal of elites. The Bureau warns some of those conspiracy theories will likely motivate some domestic extremists. If, if it was all bullshit and it was all fake, why would they try so hard to diminish it? That is, the, that is the number one thing I hear all the time, is if it was wrong, why would they try to push back on it? Like, I, that, that is like the best, like, line they ever got over and they were ever able to, like, pull on these people. Like, they, they believe that anytime, you know, anybody on the mainstream talks about them or anybody tries to debunk them, that's just more proof that it's real. Like, it's crazy how that, it's like, ins conspiracy inception or something this is all insane and incoherent it, it's because they know it isn't it's real <laughs> but you know dude i just can't wait for a day when we can just sit back and like go see football again to not have to worry if, if, if there's going to be a a protest on the field let them just be the nfl and if people want to watch it they watch it and um, like they're human beings that's akin anything. to like you as a, people saying to you as an artist being like, well, you just be, sing songs about booze and women yeah. and money and cars, <laughs> so true. but like, don't f touch this other stuff because oh that's not what God. I come to change you up for. Like, oh. <laughs> no, no, I, I love you. you. Literally I never love, thought I you now. I, no, no, but <laughs> that I, just, I love before. that, that, you know, hey, man, you got you a can, point. You can make me see something I wasn't seeing, and and um, and we laugh about it, man. And it's you're right. Much love, dude. It was great meeting you guys. While JT was drawn to Q because of political frustrations, and Q's gamified model pulled him in further, we wanted to see how the QAnon conspiracy uh... theories can quickly radicalize everyday Americans. Coming up after the break. I, I do think that at very That's high levels, it, it also involves sort of ritualistic. Um, but isn't that like that, like all the, the 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 baking and all the cue drops this guy goes through and all the game playing? He never thought like that guy just totally blew his mind with that. Hey, hey man, you know you're a musician and you're talking about like deep state pedophile cabals. Oh man, I never thought of that. Oh, shit. You know what's crazy though? Like that guy, I'm sure he's exactly in line with all the rest of the Q people, the hardcore believers, and, like, they want the military tribunals and, you know, mass executions. But everyone I know that's, like, a in, like, the QAnon content space has said that guy is, like, the nicest guy in the world. Uh, all the QAnon anonymous guys, like, everybody that's, like, interviewed that guy or talked to him, nicest guy in the world, but he wants, like, mass, mass casualties. Practices, some occult stuff. Imagine eyes wide shut, but with kids. QAnon, satanic rituals, drinking children's like blood, adrenal crime. 
directly from an anonymous figure that goes by Q. The people who read those drops, they're the ones who are referred to as anons, and that's where they Let's go over, like, sort of just QAnon 101. All right, so Q drops are these cryptic posts that come directly from an anonymous figure that goes by Q. The people who read those drops, they're the ones who are referred to as anons, and that's where the anon part comes. The most dedicated anons are known as bakers. So, if you give me an hour of your time, by the end of this, There's you'll the original probably be grifter. able to make up your mind whether you think Q is a LARP, is a phony, or... Other, other than Janet Ossobard, I would say Crane, Medic, Dave, whatever his name is, uh, his, like, introduction videos into Q, are by far pilled the most people, other than the fall of the cabal. Like, he's been there from day one. Or whether you think Q is worth paying attention to. And what those bakers do We're is they take Q's one. drops, which are also called breadcrumbs, they obsessively research it, and then they create content that could be videos, it could be tweets or posts, that then interpret it for the general public. Okay, so they're the bakers are the people who are wrapping the breadcrumbs together and creating this actual thing. Exactly. Uh, putting it in the oven, that. you know. But I will say the OGs, uh, Jordan Sather, Praying Medic, oh, yeah. In the Matrix, yeah. uh, and Dustin Nemos. Yeah, and Dustin. And that's just, that's an abbreviated list. Yeah, you know? all right. I don't know if you know this, but Dustin is on the lineup to be at QCon in Jacksonville this weekend. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, they filmed the QAnon's book, the An Invitation to the Great Awakening, shot to number one on Amazon's list of bestsellers. The book contains... What does panda mean? Think of the most horrible thing you could possibly think of in the QAnon realm, and that's what it is. I'll, I don't know, I'll put it in the comments later. Or, it, it's it's a compilation of unproven radical conspiracy theories suggesting high-ranking Democrats are part of a cult that eats children, claiming the government created AIDS and saying it's also behind the movie Monsters, Inc. Dustin Nemos is a fixture in the Q world. In 2018, he published QAnon, an invitation to the Great Awakening, making him quite literally the guy who wrote the book on Q. So the fake news has really gone from ignore QAnon to attack. And it's beautiful to see. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they attack you, and then you win. And we are winning, my friends. Sorry, I know it's tough, but you think it's tough. I can try. Yeah, Maybe. I'm a little sensitive to light because I stay up too late. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a bit three years of that, man. I'm I don't work out anymore crime. either. I'm not I just sit crime. at the computer for like 17 hours a day. You are really one of the leaders of the Q movement. Um, people look to you and your opinion. If we could just start with uh, who you are. Can you well, just give I'm, us a rundown of who you are? I, I, uh, honestly, I'm just a... a entrepreneur who started a YouTube channel and that took off and it turned into uh, sort of a surprise career. I mean, I was just covering the news, um, but uh, then I was banned a month before my daughter was born. So here I am with Bill's a, a baby on the way and, and a pregnant wife, and it's like winter, six feet of snow outside, and I'm about to be evicted because of YouTube. Uh, what was the first time that you kind of ran into Q? Christmas Eve 2017, I jumped in. New Q posts going into who and where the pedophiles in government are. When I started to see some of the um, the games that they were playing with Trump's Twitter, for example, that's when I really started to pay attention to it. Um, one famous example, he had a, a zero, 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 zero second difference on a post that Q and Trump posted at the same time, three times in one day. So there's like a no time at all difference. That was, all right guys, sorry. Me. That's sort of our methodology of establishing who he is and that it's the real legitimate Q. Uh, when they asked President Trump to say tip top, tippy top, and he did so on Easter, that's a very specific phrase. And we keep it in tip top shape. We could. And see, that's one of the ways that Q, they say, oh, he's been right so many times with the tip top thing. But how many times, like, that's one of the things, that's like one of Trump's go to's. It might as well say, oh, he said the wall today. You know what I mean? Tippy top shape is one of Trump's, like, ultimate phrases but then you know q puts it in a post trump says it within that week and it's like oh look you know that's how they that, those are like kind of how they reel a lot of the people in with like stuff like that you know what i mean call it sometimes tippy top shape speaking of the messenger there have been a lot of theories on who q is sure. uh first of all do you do you have your own theory i have a few you have a few mm -hmm. do you want to tell us i don't want the world to know who q is because it will probably get the team killed Okay, does that change for you if tomorrow's Q drop says that now's the time, everybody get their guns, and we are going to start, take to the streets and hunt these leftists? No, no. I would defend them. You would defend the leftists? Yes. How do you think the rest of the community would respond? I would honestly put forth, without even knowing the numbers, that the Q movement is the most peaceful movement in the history of mankind. 
And I think they would look to Trump for sort of clarity on that. To me, what I see is a lot of people who actually really do want to converse before we reach this tipping point where we can't anymore. And in a way, I think like this doc is, is an attempt to do that, you know? Um, I hope so. That would be great. OK, but you think that Q as a movement will continue to come together post in a post-Trump world? Sure, the need would not have stopped. Kids would still be getting hurt, and, and probably more boldly than ever, because if they had beaten Trump, then they had kind of beaten the great challenge to their rule. So. Um, you know, currency of the elite basically is babies. They're, they're trafficking in children, and it's used as blackmail with entities like Epstein and Nexium. It's used to control powerful people. Like, we know Maxwell allegedly has uh, tapes on high-level U.S. politicians. I, I do think that at very high levels, it, it also involves sort of ritualistic um, practices, some occult stuff, and I think that's, that's probably kind of a mind control thing, you know? Imagine eyes wide shut, but with kids. It does carry with it uh, part of a conspiracy that's existed for a very long time. Adrenochrome is a legitimate drug. What is this shit? That stuff? Adrenochrome. Um, it is harvested a specific way, and that is through torture and um, adrenalization, you know, fear and pain, um, most often from children. Adrenochrome is a chemical compound used in some countries to treat blood clots. It is just, yeah, just uh, anybody that's not... I have a video that talks about this more, but basically adrenochrome is an actual thing. It's basically oxidized in epinephrine, in epinephrine, however you say that. Um, but the amount that a body can produce at the maximum, uh, it would take something like 200 babies. If, you know, it would take like 200 children to, uh, to equal the size of like one EpiPen. You know what I mean? Like, it's a crazy, ridiculous amount. I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I, I have a video uh, that goes over it, but it's, a, it's such a ridiculous... And they, they just really don't understand any of the science behind it, and it, it's completely how, how this ever got started and, and stuck just shows how uh, unscientific a lot of our uh, thinking is. It is not harvested using the pain or fear from children. While child trafficking is a real yeah, problem, there is no evidence to suggest that elites are torturing children to harvest adrenochrome. So uh, this stuff does happen. Uh, child trafficking is a big business, you know, multi, multi billions of dollars. You can sell drugs once, you can sell guns once, you can sell a child a hundred times a day. Gosh, that's dark. As our camera team was packing up, Dustin made one last comment. Do you happen to know what PANDA stands for in the Q movement? No. No. I didn't think so. Uh, Dustin went on to explain one of the most violent and horrific acts imaginable. It shows how for many who see the world through Q's filter, suddenly the most ordinary things like pizza, hot dogs, and pandas become confirmation of the worst possible assumptions that you can make about someone. Coming up after the break. Yeah, that's what, and that's what they did so well, man. They, they turned two foods and a cute, cuddly, cuddle, uh, cute, cuddly uh, bear into horrific acts, which is just insane. Join me as I travel the world to study their chemistry and... Will Summers, a national reporter... Will Summers, a national reporter for the Daily Beast, his Will focus on Q work. has resulted in him becoming the target of Q and the Anons. And Angelo Carasone is the president of Media Matters for America, a nonprofit media watchdog that has been tracking Q since its creation. Why is QAnon considered so dangerous? You know, we've always gone after the right. We've, you know, had death threats before and other sorts of things. Um, this has been different. You know, we've had to have security at the office during periods of time because of the amount of threats that have happened. It's harder to, I think, ensure the safety of staff. They go after us and they use the same tactics that they use on people every day. Doxing, harassment, trolling. Doxing Google. is, you know, they will pull private Google. information and post about it online. You know, not that long ago, somebody doxed my sister and my niece. I hear, you know, several times a week, I would say, from people who have lost their families to QAnon or have lost a husband or a, a son or a mother. And these are often people who, you know, they go on Facebook, you know, in March when the pandemic's starting and suddenly they see all this QAnon stuff and they just fall headfirst into it. A lot of it is tied into the same actions and behaviors that makes them deeply connected to QAnon. You are doing your own research, you're investigating, you're deciphering clues, you're invested. 
in the idea in a different way than just, say, believing a conspiracy theory. It's a lot harder to disentangle somebody from that. Should Q be classified as a domestic terrorism threat? QAnon, we know in one case, has already inspired domestic terrorism in the case of the, the Hoover Dam ar armored truck situation. You know that there's a man on the bridge with a gun? In 2018, a man blocked the entrance to the Hoover Dam in an armored truck with a sign that said, release the OIG report. They were convinced, based off of all this chatter and the Q threads, that inside this report, finally, all of the prime people within the deep state that were running this child sex trafficking conspiracy would be exposed. I think with QAnon, it certainly sort of, it can give a sort of force for these people who are already disturbed. Bucky Wolf out, out, out in the Pacific Northwest, this was a young man who was very troubled, got into QAnon, and he allegedly killed his brother with a samurai sword um, because he was convinced he was a lizard. Stating, I will dash you lizards to pieces like pottery. Bucky Wolf was a young man who fell down the Q rabbit hole and became convinced Donald Trump was communicating with him through coded messages on the Q boards. And, and they talk about like a couple of things that happened, but the, like the amount of uh, events that happened, like, you know, uh, like murders and like, you know, incidents around like con Pizzagate conspiracies, QAnon uh, is, is quite a long list. So I don't, I, it's another reason for anybody that's actually followed this, how they could not see the sixth coming. Because it's not like we never had a QAnon-inspired uh, terrorist, uh, you know, domestic terror attack or some, you know, crazy in QAnon lashing out and, and murder, murdering somebody or, you know, blocking off a bridge. Or there was another guy that, yeah, I, he did something in L.A. But, I mean, you know, there was a lady that went after Joe Biden with a bunch of knives. Uh, you know, it, it, like there's been several things. A lady that kidnapped some kids, or her kid. Anthony Camello is another QAnon-related crime. 24-year-old Anthony Camello was taken into custody. He basically just falls down the QAnon hole, like so many people have before. And he decides that, uh, you know, he's going to go citizen's arrest the head of a mafia family. And so he figures out where this guy lives, and he rolls up, you know, allegedly, and slams into the guy's truck and shoots him. And then Camello gets in court and he holds up his hand and he's drawn a cue on it. And I mean, people were stunned. There's a few major narratives and themes, but they always weave it back to this idea of this massive operation of child sex trafficking. And the reason why all of these Democrats and the media and deep state are running these child sex trafficking rings is because they're demons feeding off of these children. We're talking about people in banking in Hollywood who are drinking children's blood. So th this is playing on some kind of like classic anti-Semitic tropes. I mean, George Soros looms very large in QAnon. Which means they're not human, they're otherworldly. That's to me is what makes it dangerous. It's a call to arms centered around an idea that the people who should be in some way targeted are not even human beings. I think the initial reaction is surely this can't be, and surely, you know, we're talking about maybe a dozen kooks on the internet. But then when you start kind of showing to people that really, I mean, this is the internet reaching into our real worlds, and this is really happening, and, you know, we can't just look away from it. How big do you think the movement is? Overall, I put it at about 10% of the population, 10 to 15%. Though the size of the movement is widely Jeez. debated, Angela's assessment closely matches ours, which lands at about 30 million followers in the U.S. It is true that some of the... 30 million in j just the U.S. I mean, that is a huge number. 30 million people. I mean, and it's huge worldwide, too. I get, you know, messages from people in other countries daily, several a day, talking about how, you know, somebody over in another country just showed them a Q video. So, I mean... If it's 30 million over here, which is just probably the biggest portion, I'd say it's got to be 100 million easy worldwide, you know, into this shit. Like, really into it. Trafficking stats are awful. It's actually a reflection of having bad domestic services. So I don't dismiss it. I embrace it. So yes, this is a terrible thing. And we better damn well do something about it. But the answer is not to run to, to any right-wing philosophy that's going to strip those services more. I think on kind of a more mundane but still very tragic level, I think just people who are alienated from their family, from their relatives, because they get so into QAnon, and then suddenly it's all they want to talk about. On a personal level, I understand that you have seen this in your own life. Can yeah. You, would you be comfortable talking a little sure. bit about that? I mean, it happens to everybody, um, even if they, they don't fully appreciate or even know why that person seems to be gone. Um, you, know, it, you know, in my case, it's a family member, it's an uncle, who's gone fully down the Q rabbit hole. Somebody that I grew up with telling me that Donald Trump was going to put my head on a pike, you know, and like, 
at least I would assume knows that I'm not like running this like massive child sex trafficking ring where I'm a demon eating children. I would at least assume that. It's pretty clear that he's gone. And um, yeah, he's gone. He's completely gone. Very sorry to hear so that. Sorry. Yeah, that's it's terrible. Hard. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when we think about this, the violence like this, it seems like it's going to be in the context of political violence. And sure, I think that's possible. But I actually think it's going to be like most violence that occurs with people they know and love, because they will be convinced that they're doing something nefarious, that they're running a child sex trafficking ring, um, that they're members of the deep state, and they will take matters into their own hands. Coming up. After the break. If Q does exist. This guy here, man, oh man, he's, uh, he, he does not give you much hope for humanity, I'll put it that way. Uh, real quick though, uh, if you guys could like the stream while you're here, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, all my links to everything are down in the description. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitch, if you enjoy my live streams, I'd really, really appreciate if you follow me on Twitch. Uh, you can join the Discord. I have a bunch of different information about like conspiracies and uh, you know daily news and just updates about my stuff. And then, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to support me, you can subscribe on Twitch or uh, get at me on Patreon. All that stuff's in the description. And we'll move on. And Q is real. And we are finding out that there is this satanic worshiping and devil and all this stuff. If this proves all of that stuff, that will make me happy because it will have undeniable proof that Satan exists and you have to acknowledge that Christ exists. QAnon. Satanic rituals? Drinking children's blood? Oh, Lord, adrenal thanks for the bits, man. Appreciate Where did they that. come from? QAnon is the, the single greatest information operation this in the just, history of I humanity. Might as well just let this How play. responsible are they for the attack on the Capitol? Should Q be classified as a domestic terrorism threat? And where are they headed that's next? That's the thing. You heard they that guy. Use he's, and encourage he's, any he's amount gonna be of happy violence against this their all comes true. Which is the same the thing for Q, that Lauren Bobert said, event, by the way. Begins Tuesday at 10 on Vice. We're in Chicago to meet Dominic Izzo, a former police officer and online personality who recently began looking into Q. Oh, this one's going to piss a lot of you off. All right. How would you describe Q to someone who's never heard of it before? Q is about ending child sex trafficking. I don't know another worthy cause outside of that. I got bit by the Q bug back in February of this year. I think that it was just about... I just want to point out that his exact suit is the exact same thing as I wore as like a, a Halloween mobster outfit when I was like 19. Like it is the most uh, like generic gangster suit I think I've ever seen. Out uh, the beginning of the lockdown, so before March, um, I don't recall what it was. I th no, I think it was the Janet Osbard Fall of Cabal documentary. I was captivated, and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and for me. That is so crazy to me that a guy who has police training, has been on the police force for a very long time, watched the fall of the cabal and got and got pilled to the point where he's full on hoping for basically a civil war. Uh, he's he's all in on it. And that was only, you know, this they clearly filmed this during the summer and that came out in, I think, the first of February. So within three or four months, he's fully all the way in off of a, a bad YouTube video that apparently has a shit ton of pull over a lot of people. Somebody who's pretty good at discerning, somebody who's pretty good at needing and requiring facts to make a concrete decision, I was, I wanted to believe it bad. What brought you to become a police officer? Ideology, I wanted to change the world, are you kidding me? Loved it. I'm Christian. I was raised Catholic. <laughs> you start looking at <clears throat> what is supposed to be the most righteous organization on the planet. Rome, the Vatican, the Catholic Church. How hard is it to believe then that you flip that side of the coin and there's going to be a darker, more nefarious cabal, if you will, that is operating off of the same aspect. Satanic rituals, drinking children. Yeah, and it well, and let, let's also point that out, that there's a very serious chance that he's just using this as a grift because it's a nice grift if you can get it right now, Jesus. His blood, adrenal chrome, this stuff has been going on. If Q does exist and Q is real, that will make me happy because it will have undeniable proof that Satan exists and you have to acknowledge that Christ exists. That's insane, right? <laughs> 
Ashley Bryan is a co-founder of Win Black Palante, a national campaign hub designed to counter disinformation. You're using misinformation and disinformation sort of interchangeably. Do you find a distinction in those? Misinformation is, is without uh, intent. In the beginning of the pandemic, right, there wasn't a lot of information out there. The country was scrambling to figure out what's happening. Disinformation is with the intent to disinform. I like to just call them plain old lies. <laughs> Quite honestly, just some bullshit. You know? just some bullshit. <laughs> In an Instagram post recently that you referred to BLM supporters as subhuman. 100%. What do you mean by that? 100%. Black Lives Matter. Anybody who supports them is, is subhuman, in my opinion. I mean, I support Black Lives Matter. Am I subhuman? I'm very black and white, and I'm extremely polarizing. So my, my subhuman, that's always going to be my emotional God, uh, uh, polarizing post because I absolutely always post for controversy's sake and to create and to stir a narrative. The other thing that we're noticing a lot is like language that dehumanizes Black Lives Matter. What is the effect of that type of... And that goes like the way he talks about it. Like that's the kind, those are the kind of social media posts that really, really hit. You take a guy like Tyler Bluntman, even though he's obviously not on this level, but he says these crazy statements about abortion or different you know, gun rights or whatever. And those are the posts that, you know, get engaged with. If you're like a middle of the road kind of, oh, well, I can see both sides. And you try to actually make a logical explanation. Those posts go like nowhere on social media, especially platforms like TikTok and Instagram. But the more controversial and the more, you know, you know radical your statement, that's the, that's the thing that gets you a million views. Look no further than all the martial law TikToks. that got 100K likes. Uh, y'all are, you know, saying BLM is subhuman, a ridiculous statement. And, you know, I'm sure that blew up for him. Language. It has large effects. Simply being a black person in America is challenging. And so to be beat down and diminished and dehumanized, as, as you said, it just continues to add this additional layer. Don't you deserve to know who I really am? Don't you deserve to know? Oh, he thinks that these people are subhuman? 100%. Another favorite of yours seems to be the pushing that Michelle Obama's a man. Can you talk oh to us gosh, about Jesus. that? It's, I, uh, I hate that woman. Then I will go down that conspiracy theory oh, when she's dancing on wait, Ellen. Is she a man you or a woman? I love enjoying these, these uh, fantasy and fantastical uh, 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 possibilities that are out there. I'm not a fan of her personally, so why would you know? Yeah, why wouldn't I go low? And this just goes to show how dark these groups are willing to go, because to use that you know transphobic type of of commentary when it's so easily debunked. I know. I mean, I think that's the most confusing thing to me is that they double down on these lies that literally takes a half a second for someone to debunk. I mean, it's like this birtherism, right? It's, it's you know, all of these narratives are, are just, it, it's pure ridiculousness. Are these sophisticated tactics? No. They're able to do that because they have a listening ear to folks that are willing to believe these narratives to make themselves feel better, to make them, make them feel better about their unfounded hate. They're my opinions, and at the end of the day, you know, I guess I'm, I, I, I'll be an asshole, but I still will hope you'll see that that's a, that's a part of me, but it doesn't define everything that I am. That was really rough for me. Uh, talking to Dom was really unsettling. I felt, uh, I was sort of taken aback at how offensive a lot. And the, 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 the list of cops that are involved in QAnon is 10 miles long. I, I was actually going to do a video about all the, the cops involved in QAnon. Uh, there's a guy, real goofy guy, that has a podcast. He talks about all the same stuff. They're just this really, you know, overbearing oafs that are like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, the, the, the dumbest stuff, the birtherism, the Mo Michelle Obama is a man, you know, and it's probably mostly a grift, but the amount of cops or former cops that are in that field are, you know, have worn patches for Q and stuff like that. It, it is disturbing. A lot of the things he said was in this sort of very friendly manner, right? 
was like looking us in the eye and was like, yeah, yeah, I think you're subhuman. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, I think, and the thing, his follow-up to that of explanation, which is that over time he learned that creating posts that were as polarizing as possible was a way that he can kind of grow his audience online. And I think that's a great example when you read between the lines of how social media amplifies kind of the most outrageous messages. As a police officer, he's had this training and he understands how to investigate things. And yet, looking at these numbers, he felt that he's doing something about it by just posting these things instead of joining a legitimate organization that's fighting human trafficking. And that save our children thing becomes kind it's of the that. soft, the soft pill before you get to the other level of Q, right? Like you kind of come in the door with like, let's stop child sex trafficking. And then you leave thinking there is this global conspiracy. And I think the, the thing that stands out to me when I think about the difference between those is they act like it's this grassroots movement and it's not. It's some person somewhere that has made a decision to do this, make, put these ideas in people's head. Yeah, so I guess I just don't, at this point, like don't really know how much of that I know to be true. How do we untangle the web, you know, that's been created to try to put some order to what just appears to the outside viewer as chaos? Let's work on it. Now the chans may seem chaotic to the naked eye, but the chans Julian. are actually a constant competition. Who can create the most viral or outrageous thing? This girl went missing. And now Wayfair is selling this cabinet. The with chan the same boards really are something else, man. Dollars. I was looking through uh, the the MAGA code Twitter feed, uh, account, and man, there's, uh, there's there's they're going strong on the sovereign citizen stuff. The uh, the country is a corporation shit. I bet. Distraction? No, I'm just, done with this. This is why CNN say, is a joke. We can't even report the facts on daily news. Hey, We're standing up <laughs> for the whole world, for all the kids. Great awakening here. Hear me. Everybody, I had enough for everybody on the crew, so you can come and grab me. Okay, go toss, toss it up, man. Toss it up. Julian Field, Jake Rokotansky, and Travis oh, View boys. have watched the Q movement unfold since the very beginning. So, we usually like order tacos or whatever. In August 2018, they launched a podcast called QAnon Anonymous. More than two years later, it has become the go-to place for those who are Q curious, looking for the latest update. So how do you guys think that Q went from being just this sort of obscure movement on the internet, living in the chans, to a political movement? So Q started on the 4chan message board. The chans, uh, they go back to Japanese nihilism, 2channel and other image boards that became prevalent there among young people who didn't have opportunities and, uh, you know, and were just like, well, I feel alone and disconnected. I can't get a girlfriend. And so that culture kind of spread to the United States. What started defining them is the anonymity. You can go there and say anything. Just let it loose. Doesn't matter. No, no consequences. Now, the chans may seem chaotic to the naked eye, but the chans are actually a constant competition. Who can create the most viral or outrageous thing? One classic example is the Wayfair conspiracy theory. This girl went missing, and now Wayfair is selling this cabinet with the same name for $12,000. But that's not it. This girl, missing. This cabinet with coincidentally the same exact name that she has, $13,000. Even though there's no substance to this, it caught on amongst people who maybe have never even heard of Q. The actual people who they would put oh, as yes. the missing person yes. would come up on Facebook and be like, why am I mad? Because I'm not missing, <laughs> out of here. It does seem like there were iterations. That might've been the dumbest, like the dumbest moment in the, uh, the cabal QAnon conspiracy movement. That amazing Polly, she had a lot to do with the Wayfair conspiracy. But man, that, I remember that one popped up on my timeline, on, uh, or not on my timeline, but on my, uh, on my FYP on TikTok. Like, man, we have reached another level of batshittery now. We're, we got cabinets, like, we're just, like, I, like, the logistics of that alone are just a nightmare of Q over time and it yeah. continues to evolve. Were there any precursors? The insider anon was a common genre on 4chan. You know, uh, prior to QAnon, there's one called FBI anon in 2016 yeah, I made a video about who this, also like claimed to have insider information about the imminent prosecution of Hillary Clinton. So this was a common genre of post. 
And usually, you know, this supposed insider claims that, you know, some big thing is going to happen and the Anons play along or they try to trip him up, which mostly treated as a game. You guys have studied this more than anybody. I mean, really, so who is it? Who's you? I mean, could it be some kid in their basement in New Jersey or wherever, you know, who sort of made this LARP and all of a sudden it, it hit and now maybe he's got a couple friends working. I mean, it's, it almost doesn't matter really who it is anymore. Some evidence has been gathered of who may or may not be involved. There's the early days in which we get to see the kind of early influencers like Tracy Beans or Pamphlet and on. There's that small crew. Then we don't know if it's changed hands a bunch of times. Now, at this point, we do know that there's another point where some evidence is gathered, which is through uh, 8chan and now 8coon itself. Uh, Jim Watkins and his son, Ron Watkins, who run 8coon and people around them, like they, at the very least, have verified the identity of Q and said, this is the correct and authentic Q. They've had to do that multiple times over. So he uh, uh, or she or they, whoever Q is, has at the very least been in contact with them and jumped through some hoops to kind of reassert that they're Q. So, we've talked to a ton of people. I feel I feel I feel like uh maybe they're being a little more like being a little uh leaving a little bit out for the uh for the rest of the series. But if I had to guess from listening uh to the QAnon anonymous guys, I would say that they would they think it's uh Ron Watkins and Jim Watkins, which is who I think it is now. I think there could there, there's a maybe a group of people that they have that you know work for them that go along with it, but if I had to put money on it, I would say it, it was the first set of people they talked about. They kind of cultivated it uh, with the help of Jim. I feel like he's always been involved, uh, but then it switched over because those three, the first three they talked about, the Paul Ferber, Tracy Beans, they're kind of out of the Q spotlight anymore. But I would say now it's it's. You know, well, now it's not anybody, obviously, but uh, Q or, or Jim and Ron were the ones running it the past couple of years. Uh, and now that the, the heat's on, I don't think I don't I don't know. I don't think we'll see Q post again. Honestly, we might. But I don't know. It's been like almost two months. So we'll see. People in this community, and it is very clear to me that certainly this has been massively impactful. I want to know who's behind it. Let's do this. Okay, so top theories. There was the theory of Patriot Soapbox. That was the theory that this company, Patriot Soapbox, which was made up of a woman named Tracy Beans, who's a YouTuber, and uh, Coleman Rogers and Paul Ferber, and they were sort of, I guess, bakers, but seem to have a lot of access. And then there was videos of Tracy yelling at the president that she's Q. We are Q. We love you. We are Q. We're Q. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is the idea that this was all a joke, right? All for a LARP. Oh, yeah, all yeah. for a LARP. That was big in 2018 when Jack Sobia came out saying that I know who Q is. I'm going to publish this report on OAN. I've talked to the founders. We started Q as a joke on Trump supporters, and we just wanted to see how far we could take it. I could see that being a funny joke. Recently, <laughs> I just heard this, and I've been trying to reach out to him, but this guy, Fred Brennan, mm. who started Frederick 8chan, Brennan. is claiming that the guy who now runs 8chan... Frederick's cool, I like him. Jim I Watkins. Him on Twitter. That's his name, Jim Watkins, uh, is the person who controls Q. Who else do we have to look into? Yeah, I mean, the last one I think we shouldn't rule out yet is that it actually is somebody close to the president. I'm well, going to rule that one I'm out. I'm just not going to give it that kind of credit, though, right yeah, now. I'm so gonna, uh, gonna we're going to say out, that, Bob. for me, the thing that seems most promising, at least from just an entry point, is the Watkins theory. Yes. So uh, let's talk to Fred. Fred Brennan has made national news by appearing on my favorite podcast, Reply All, saying that his former business partner, Jim He's and Ron Watkins, basically have taken created over Q's account. Too. I'm making a very specific claim. He's not a maker, he's a taker. He took 8chan and now he's taking Q. It is known that he has control over the Q account. We good? Fred, Frederick pretty much built the, the current site that uh, that Q post on the 8 coon. Uh, or maybe, yeah, but he basically he worked for Jim for a while and then things got out of hand with the Q posts uh, and he bailed basically. Uh, but he uh, he's a firm believer in the Jim Watkins theory that, you know, Jim runs the whole thing. By the way, if you guys could like the stream, really appreciate it and go. Where'd you pull that water from? 
Just behind the dog. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> so before things got all dark and up, what was like the problem? You know that you were looking to solve launching 8chan. The, the reason I really made 8chan, 8chan was just because I thought that the users of 4chan don't have enough control of the topic of the board, and that there are only 30 or 40 boards in the whole kind of early tens. I very much believed that users having control of the board was a good thing. But everything changed in September 2014 when rival platform 4chan banned all discussions of Gamergate a coordinated harassment campaign against women working in the video game industry. Before Gamergate, we got like 100 posts per hour. And then after Gamergate, it was like 7,000, 6,000. Okay, am I gonna kick them off? Or look at all these users I have now. I made the shitty decision to allow them to stay. And yeah, that totally changed the, the site. Hi guys. I'm Jim. Was that kind Jesus. of when when the Watkins family reaching out to you really landed? Uh-huh, yeah. The Watkins family's pitch to me. We own this huge Japanese site that gets millions and millions of anonymous posts per day, and we want to help you host 8chan. Any problem you're having, we'll fix it. They said, you know, we'll have a contract. It'll be like... 60 40 of future profits and you know back then i thought there might be some future profits so i went to the philippines in october 2014. so what was your like day-to-day -day life like in the philippines really easy i mean <laughs> it really easy compared to here you know all i had to do was kind of focus on hn which took up all my entire day it seemed like hey maybe this will work you know but then the shootings happened q anon satanic rituals drinking other things they don't talk about, um, or they haven't talked about it yet anyway, is uh, a lot of the posts that QAnon posts, it's fair, like, a lot of the same things that Jim Watkins is into, Q has posted about, like, Jim Watkins is a weird guy, so he collects pins, uh, Q has mentioned pins several times, like, writing pins, and then, uh, well, uh like, right before, uh, Q started posting on 8chan and 8kun, or 4chan, then 8chan, then 8kun, uh, Jim had a website where he'd always talk about, like, the deep state uh, and Hillary Clinton getting locked up. Uh, and, like, Q has actually mentioned, like, yoga and, like, yoga routines in some of his posts. And Jim Watkins, you wouldn't think it by looking at him, but he's a big proponent of yoga. So there, there's a lot, like, uh, there's a lot in there that kind of shows that it's possibly him. I mean speed this up a little bit uh, da, da, da. use and encourage any amount of violence against their political enemies. Yeah, Ga Q you know who the took, you know Q, took full advantage of Gamergate and Steve Bannon he actually talked Tuesday about it in his book at 10 Gamergate is why he hired Milo Yiannopoulos Hours before, a 28-year-old Australian man calmly walked into this mosque and murdered 51 people. He posted a 74-page manifesto laying out his motivation on a website called H. Yeah, the Chan sites are where all the manifestos felt get posted. Like this isn't maybe such a good idea after all. Yeah, you wouldn't Wanted think, to take right? it down. The problem just became that Watkins had other ideas. Proactively censoring something that they would do in the People's Republic of China. Americans don't do that. Weird. In the beginning, Man. when Q is maybe 10 to 20% of our users, we don't need, need it. But now, where after the shooting, Q stops posting, their entire site will have no traffic. They can't let Q stop posting, basically. By that time, Fred had washed his hands of his creation, paving the way for a full takeover by the Watkins. 8chan was now the exclusive home of Q Drops. Fred believes that Jim and his son Ron also took over Q's online persona. I knew that Q had moved to 8chan because Ron was really excited about that, you know? And, oh, uh, we're gonna get all this traffic from the Q board that moved and... I mean, like, did he bring that business in? Basically, I mean, I feel like he... He was kind of communicating with Paul Ferber at the time and making Paul Ferber feel comfortable with HN, basically. Paul Ferber is the first guy we know for sure was running a Q-related board. 4chan became so unusable that then we all moved to 8chan and the board that I created, which was um, Calm Before the Storm. Uh, Paul Ferber is, well, that's who I think was the original Q. 
is Paul Ferber, the guy talking down, the South African guy. What's the name of the guy in the wheelchair? Frederick Brennan. That's, uh, yeah, he created, he created 8chan. Or he was like the software guy, basically, or whatever. He created the site. CBTS. Six months after the Christchurch murders, 8chan is shut down. The Watkins migrate everything to a new board they call 8coon, and Q follows. While many believe the Watkins control the posts, Fred suspects there may be others working on Q behind the scenes. He kind of has all these guys who would be willing to lie to people, you know, and to write Q-style posts. I've heard different names, Thomas Schoenenberger. Heard his name thrown out. Tell me, who is that? I've tried to avoid going down the Thomas rabbit hole because I know people who have, and they haven't ever brought anything concrete out of that rabbit hole. When you look at this long enough, the idea that this is a network of people, not an individual, not sexy for a documentary, right? Yeah. Or like a media piece. It's not sexy. It's but it's not. but it's the truth. But it's the truth. But as long as these drops are still continuing, it matters a lot. Because who's writing them and who is having all this influence? Who else is kind of in the background, we don't know. Where do you think Jim Watkins is right now? ABC News told us he's somewhere in America. You should get, you should try to find him. He'd probably be somewhere in California, actually. We all agree that Jim has something to do with QAnon, you know, the publishing of Q drops right now. But it doesn't really answer a lot of questions for all of the things. The craziest thing about all this is that after Q stopped posting is when the shit hit the fan, like really hit the fan. It was always going to hit the fan after Trump lost, uh, but it really hit the fan after he stopped posting. Uh, and the craziest and other crazy thing is, is all these guys, all these, all these QAnon content creators, these grifters who have been basically saying like Q is leading the way and, uh, you know, Q is our guiding light. Like they haven't talked about Q at all since he just like up and vanished or they up and vanished and haven't posted in forever. Like they don't ever mention him. They just kind of uh, keep sticking with this voter fraud narrative and, you know, going with the stop the steal and, you know, whatever the day's news is kind of thing. But somehow Q, who started all this, never gets brought up anymore. Kind of weird. Before uh, Jim Watkins took over Q, like how, what was the involvement there? And more importantly, what was the origin story? Unsurprising about the Jim, Jim Watkins accusations, but interesting about this Thomas Schoenberger character. I think we should definitely look into that. Yeah. Let's hit the bunker. <laughs> Good job. That was the worst high five. Nope, that's clearly not gonna work. Ready? <laughs> Wait, you don't even know. Wait, what? So Jim Watkins is yeah. going to be in Phoenix tomorrow. No way. Like nobody has Wait, talked to this call? guy. Yes, someone's gotta ask Jim the cue. Someone needs to ask that guy the cue. So, so this uh, seems like our shot. That's exciting. I also have a thing, though. Um, this guy, Thomas what? Schoenberger. Mm, yep. Uh, I've been looking into him, and he's too weird not to go further on. Uh, <laughs> what I, kind of weird are we Yeah, talking? this is a guy yeah. who uh, writes music for babies um, to make them smarter. <laughs> I don't really know what happens next, but apparently he has since really gone down a very dark turn and has now several really like serious criminal charges against him, including defrauding guy. a bunch of old women of their life savings and also a felony stalking charge. Um, that is a dark turn. Pretty dark also turn. Also really work in both ends of the age spectrum with the babies <laughs> and the old people. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> like, what's great here. Really monetizing. Definitely not end. sure, yeah. <laughs> so we basically have two key suspects at this point. On one hand, there's Jim, who we know has some level of influence over Q. We just don't really know how much. And to play devil's advocate, just because he controls the board where Q posts doesn't mean that he is actually writing the posts. Our second theory that's incubating and forming right now is figuring out who this guy Thomas Schoenberger is, because Fred mentioned him. It seems like a few people have tried to dig up some info, but nothing has come to light quite yet. So I'll go look into the gym theory, and you look into the Thomas theory. I love it. Um, it's done. See you when you're back. Too late. It's done. Be safe. Next time on QAnon, the search for Q. You're dealing with one of the most experienced spies you're ever going to meet. That. It was meant to be a parody. I think, the other, kind of I think the other one comes out tomorrow night, so I might stream that too if I can, if not busy. Like a big joke, a joke see on the president, a joke on all these other people that we could laugh at. Thomas, are you Q?
Q is an elaborately constructed operation. I'm a Trump fan, and I don't care what you say. Thank you. Anybody could be a QAnon. Like, anybody could be a part of it. I what network is Vice on? I'm pretty sure Vice is its own network, but uh, this is just on YouTube. Uh, or at least this video was. They have, you know, they have their own YouTube channel. Um, am I going to follow this series? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be kind of, I mean, be kind of dumb not to, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it on that. I don't know. What'd y'all think? I thought it was pretty good. It's interesting. Um, I feel like it's kind of bad timing now that Q has stopped posting for him. Like, clearly they made this, you know, a few months ago. But it, it's like an interesting look at, like, all, all the characters involved and how, like, this, this whole conspiracy ecosystem kind of grew from this thing, you know what I mean? Like, there's not, like, this whole network of JFK conspirators. It's just not that way. Like, this is the only, like, ongoing, and even now that it has been thoroughly debunked and nothing came true, still growing in certain places especially other countries i don't know i just i find it very interesting yeah no it looks like uh it looks like the next one it, it starts I, I thought it started tomorrow but apparently well this is like a precursor kind of thing this is kind of like the well you know the 101 so we'll probably get into more of like their in-depth stuff in the next one I hate little kind of don't believe in it. Like. I believe that QAnon is the single is. greatest information operation in the history of humanity. You live in a dream. Actually, you live in a nightmare. The internet has been accused of... But yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Um, I don't know, what'd y'all think? I thought, it was, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, no, I like the... Uh, that's why I said I was just going to watch it by myself, you know what I mean? But I figured I might as well stream it. Shit, you know. Uh, I figured you guys would enjoy it. We could, uh, you know, have a little community discussion. On your way out, anybody, if you could like the stream, really, really appreciate it. All my links to everything are down in the description. If you want to support the stream or subscribe on Twitch or if you want to follow me on Twitch, uh, that's all in the description. Social medias, join the Discord, la la la, all that jazz, all that shilling stuff. You know, you got to... I gotta shill a little bit, just what 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 we gotta do. And if not, you know, just subscribe, like, any of that stuff. But uh country and depressing, how delusional so many good folks are I've become. Dude, tell me about it. That's the same I I you know it's the same way with me, man. Like even though, you know, like I make conspiracy debunking videos, I see new friends or family members i you know different people i know every single day falling down the the cue hole still uh you know it's not going anywhere and like somebody said at the beginning of the stream i just hope they don't get more radicalized mm. yeah and i thought it was good definitely thought it was good do 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 real quick one thing do you guys do you guys see this donald trump made a Office, office of the former president. That would, yeah. Statement from the office of the former president. Today, the 45th president of the United States, Donald John Trump, Donald John Trump, formally opened the office of the former president, which is not a thing. The office will be responsible for managing President Trump's correspondence, public statements, appearances, and official activities to advance the interests of the United States and carry out. The agenda of the Trump administration through advocacy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know how he's... Uh, clearly, it's a grift, but I don't know how he's exactly grifting with it. But, I mean, it's Trump, so we know it's a grift. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd much, ra I'd much rather watch it with the group, too. You know what I mean? It's more interesting get everybody's opinions. I mean, clearly we're all into this kind of shit, so. Um. But yeah, I think that's everything. I don't know. I didn't really get to catch much news today. I know they did deliver the articles of impeachment. Seen that. Oh, Giuliani's getting sued. Seen that on, uh, This is them delivering the articles of impeachment.
Mr. President and members of the Senate, I announce the presence of the managers on the part of the House of Representatives to conduct proceedings on behalf of the House concerning the impeachment of Donald John Trump, former President of the United States. The managers on the part of the House will be received. Do we need some younger people in in in, uh, in Congress? This, I mean, I can barely like understand this guy from the uh, I don't know, just the very hacky sounding voice. To the well of the Senate, Patrick Leahy. I knew that. There goes the articles. Like leading them like they're uh, best in show. First, third, best in show. Guards in arms will make the proclamation. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons are commanded to keep silent on pain of imprisonment while the House of Representatives of is exhibiting to the Senate of the United States an article of impeachment against Donald John Trump, former President of the United States. And that's that. I don't know. I guess I wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, what is this one? Bam. But yeah, thank you all for... Uh, Hanging out. I don't know the young gins and Matt Gates, Lauren Bober. Dude, the, the yeah, okay. I'll get the the GOP, the young representatives in the GOP are dog shit. I mean, we have what uh uh what's what's his name? Uh the the kid in the wheelchair. I can't think of his name right now while I'm drawing a blank, but you have him, Lauren Bobert. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I guess she's not that young, but she's new. Matt Gates, uh, we have a, a just a crop of goofballs on the GOP side, and it's gonna. I think it's gonna lose them seats. Uh, and I, Madison Cawthorn, that's it. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know that in that entire flock, like they they came in like uh, like that, like right in that you know 2019, beginning of 2020 was like the perfect time for, for, for Trump politics. And so, you know, Trump was the president. He had the power. He, had, he backed these people. Now, when they all go for re-election and they, they do a terrible job because they're not going to get anything passed, it's going to be all based on rhetoric. It's really going to kind of be a test of where the GOP is going to go. Like, I really see all those people just losing in a landslide. And, like, uh, I don't know how... Uh, Lauren Boebert, she's in Colorado. Like, I know Colorado has red parts of it, but man, it's a pretty blue state. The trash pack. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, that's their, that's their, uh, their answer to the squad. You know, I don't see, I don't see, um, Lauren Boebert getting, uh, reelected. Yeah, yeah. Madison Madison Cawthorn is a disgrace to Ted Cruz. Yeah, remember when it was Lindsey Graham was the worst thing? Now Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham just seem like elder statesmen almost compared to the Lauren Boberts and Madison Cawthorns of the world. Madison Cawthorn claimed he had an investment firm that he opened in 2019, and he never claimed any income. Like it's gonna be the worst investment firm I ever heard of. Uh, he lied about when he got kicked out of the Naval Academy or, the, or how that whole story went down. He was a, a D student who went to one semester of college, which whatever, all that's fine if you're not a jackass. You know, you go, uh, you go out and you openly support and the insurrection people uh, and lie about and, and talk about the dro drop boxes in the Constitution. Seth Rogen, Ted, yeah, the Seth Rogen, Ted Cruz Twitter fight was pretty epic. Not gonna lie. But doesn't he always say tippy top? Yeah, no, that's the thing. Well, that's what Q does. Like, uh, in one, one, one Q post that, uh, 
people will always point to is the one where he mentioned Epstein Island, but it was in like 2018. Like Epstein got arrested originally in 2009. So anybody that is a half decent researcher from 2009 on knew that Epstein was a bad guy and that he had an island. So saying, oh, Epstein Island and one Q drop out of a whole list of things, you know what I mean? Like he made over 4,000 drops. Some of them were paragraphs. You're going to say a couple things that could be interpreted as correct predi predictions. He just said Epstein Island, and then the Q people turned that into, oh, he called Epstein before it happened. It's like, no, no, dude. No, we're not being that charitable. That's not how it went down. AOC went after, uh, AOC went after Josh Hawley today because he was saying that he was being, you know, like, canceled or something. Because, you know, he... His his one his one million dollar book deal got canceled, so he had to go to another publisher and get a million dollar book deal. Like these people's idea of canceled is ridiculous. And I'm I'm a big proponent that cancel culture really, when it comes to celebrities, just really is not a thing. Like I can't think of a single person other than maybe Harvey Weinstein who clearly deserved it. But can you think of anyone who like didn't deserve it who just completely lost everything because of cancel culture because I can't like any example people bring up like that person always like gets back on their feet even uh what's his name even Louis CK Louis CK actually did some weird shit and he's you know he's back killing it he's back selling out arenas or whatever not I mean not right now because you know pandemic but he was like he was he was like semi canceled for like a year. And then that was it. You know what I mean? Cancel culture is the biggest hawk of shit ever. AOC has the best clapbacks. Yes. Yeah, by far. She, she, she is our, uh, she's the king of uh, left-wing Twitter. But they just make it so easy. People like Ted Cruz and, and Josh Hawley who talk about, oh, I was canceled and I'm standing up for uh, the rights of Americans by coming on the na number one rated network television to bitch about my million dollar book deal. It's like, dude, get some real problems. People are starving. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Well, Fox News is losing its ratings due to cancel culture. From yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Republicans, the Republicans are the ones that are like setting Nikes on fire and throwing cure rigs off of, off of their balcony. Like, they're the ones that are really going on the cancel culture stuff. And then they're, you know, Matt, Matt Lauer. Yeah, but Matt Lauer also did terrible things. Like, I'm talking like somebody who, like, didn't do terrible things. Like, Matt Lauer, like, did horrible things and got canceled. Like, Harvey Weinstein and Matt Lauer don't count. Like, they got canceled because it was reasonable. Yeah. Louis C.K. just lost a large and progressive demographic. He'll, just, he'll remain a genius to the disgusting people. But yeah, he, he'll, he'll still sell out shows. Like, there's people that aren't going to watch his stuff anymore. Like, I don't ever care to watch a Louis C.K. thing again. But I only thought he was, like, mildly funny before. Like, I had seen, like, one stand-up special. And, like, I even like stand-up comedy. And I'm, like, not, like, you know, easily offended. Like, I'd say probably my favorite comic is you know either dave Chappelle, probably bill burr second you know and they kind of they you know they jump the line sometimes but they're actually funny you know if you're just you know saying dumb shit if you know like nick foster humor is never funny those guys actually you know know how to be funny garth brooks got canceled i don't know about that didn't when did Dar garth brooks get canceled garth brooks is like a bajillionaire Garth Brooks' kids is kids is kids is kids is kids. It was just that, and he was just at the inauguration. Grab the chest on the plane. The center who grabbed the woman's chest on the plane. Hmm. I don't know. But I mean, well, if that, if he did that, though, that's bad. I'm saying, like, uh, like people like you know Bill Maher 
they talk about oh you know oh i got canceled by the left but did you really though like you're on a, like a, a hugely successful tv show you go on you know you go on all these different podcasts al franken you know what al franken might be the best example of cancel culture where it actually kind of worked but like he didn't you know he 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 was a sacrificial lamb uh thanks he he basically was a sacrificial lamb because of uh what's her name Kristen Gillibrand's uh political aspirations truthfully now i think i, I think franken could run again and he'd win you know what i mean so even though at the time yes cancel culture probably worked against him now i don't think uh I, I think I think Franken would be fine. Truthfully, I wish he'd run again. Uh, so, because uh, I liked him. I mean, I think I don't remember exactly what happened with his allegations, but I feel like they were they were bullshit for the most part, as far as I remember. I mean, don't quote me on that because I don't really remember. It's been a couple years. I don't think Garth Brooks is a Republican. I mean, he was just at the inauguration. If he is, he's a uh, He's low key about it, but you know what I mean, though. Like, uh, even if Bill Maher lost ratings, like that's not getting canceled. Like, if a couple people don't like your content, like if I lost a couple subscribers because, like, I don't know, I supported a public option instead of uh, Medicare for all, or you know, something dumb like that. Like, that's not getting canceled. You know, it like. And, and then, especially when it comes to like those high up celebrities, like you know what a, uh, a case of cancel culture that people bring up a lot is the guy from Saturday Night Live, uh, whatever Shane Shane Gillis, uh, you know they talk about oh he was canceled he got you know kicked off Saturday Night Live like right after that happened, he has a podcast that had like a hundred patrons, and then after that, his podcast now he makes like. 25 grand a month off of his podcast so he got canceled into what you could basically really consider because he was only ever like uh you know he was supposed to be like the conservative comedian on saturday night live so he was basically like a gimmick comedian that was only going to ever last a year so off that whole controversy that he had he got a whole bunch of people that are like oh i'm not letting this guy get canceled here's a bunch of money so now he makes 25k for a once a week podcast that is not even good. Hmm. Garth, Bro Garth Brooks performed at Obama's? I didn't know that. Or maybe I did and forgot. I don't know. I do. do. <laughs> uh, Garth Brooks in the 90s is a 90s conservative pro. T yeah. Garth Brooks, yeah, I'm sure Garth Brooks kind of just. Garth Brooks is a businessman, so he uh he probably goes with the flow. He's a really weird guy though. Um your that your mom's house podcast, they they've gone over like uh Garth Brooks's Instagram and his Facebook and he you can he's like he's like one of those people that's just been rich for so long that they're not really in touch with reality, which is what it's weird for them country guys, cause the whole shtick is like, I'm a man of the people. I love my 250. I love getting muddy in my truck. Like, you know, every man, you know, drink a beer after work. But this guy uh, probably hasn't gotten a soda for himself in 20 years and, and goes on a private jet everywhere. So it's got to be weird to, like, keep that act up. Like, he has no idea what the every man goes through for the last, I don't know. He's been ridiculously famous as long as I've been alive, it feels like. I got to see Garth at ACL in Austin. I bet you a Garth concert would be interesting. I, w I don't. I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, what it was that I went to uh, in Dallas? I went to a Jason Alde Aldean concert with an ex girlfriend of mine. Like I'm not really in the country, but I mean it was kind of an interesting event. You know what I mean? Good good place to get drunk at. Yeah, exactly. Getting getting canceled leads to greener pastures because there's always that segment of people that are like, oh, yeah, you ain't canceling this guy. Cancel, you know, because there's this whole narrative of cancel culture and everyone's toxic and, uh, you know, and like you're comparing like idiots on Twitter 
It's like, oh, well, 40 years ago, I would, this would have never went down. It's like 40 years ago, hundreds of millions of people didn't have a, couldn't say whatever they want at a drop of a dime. They could go home and write it in their journal. Uh, yeah, you're going to piss off some people when everybody has an opinion. Like, that's how the internet works. But yeah, no, everybody, like, b pretty much anyone that gets canceled, canceled, comes back with a vengeance and, you know, starts a ridiculously uh, lucrative deal in some way or another. Country scares me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it, but the, like, a country concert is definitely, is an event you should go to. Like, I'm, I'm really into, like, punk rock music, always have been, and I tell people that even if you haven't, even if you're not into punk rock, you should definitely go to a punk rock concert, because it's a very, very interesting, uh, uh, evening, for sure, especially at, like, a small event. Like, I'm very ready to get over COVID so I can go back to the Triple Rock in Minneapolis at some point. I've been to two concerts. One was DMB, the other was Loverboy. I don't know who either of those people are. DMB? Am I too old or too young for that? <laughs> like, I, I, like, only reason I know any music that has come out in the last five years, I think it's because of TikTok. And I only know the viral sound part. <laughs> like, I'm stuck listening. Oh, Dave Matthews. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Dave Matthews Band, that would be a good concert. I, I didn't snap DMB. Oh, okay, so we're not that far apart. No, I'm 32, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Dave Matthews Band, that, that would be a good concert. I never got to see, the, I never, I've never seen Dave Matthews, obviously. I don't really think they tour anymore. But uh, what was, uh, Green, Green Day is on my bucket list. I've always wanted to see them in concert. It just, I used to travel a shit ton for work. Uh, so it's never really lined up. Yeah, we're old. We're, dude, we're especially like in social media. We're super, I'm super old. I like the old Garth Brooks stuff. I mean, honestly, I don't, I haven't listened to a Garth Brooks song in probably like 15 years, but like the, uh, like the older, older stuff. I know all about that. Green Day, yeah, definitely. Insane Juggalos. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't... Um, the Insane Clown Posse. I would not mind going to uh, the Gathering of the Juggalos and just, like, film it. You know what I mean? I'm always, like... I, I like the weird and interesting. And, you know, those people... I, I actually... It was a Vice documentary I watched. And, you know, they have that uh, annual Gathering of the Juggalos. Uh, it seems like quite the event. You know, it's like basically a... I, I don't know, like... Almost like a carnival type thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely too old to be twerking on TikTok. Not that I, I don't... I don't think that would go well even if I tried. I've noticed, like, uh, I, I, I meant to, like, I'm friends with, like, a few of the younger TikTokers, and I've been meaning to, like, tell them, like, y'all need to chill out on yelling at each other so much, because I feel like there's so much infighting with the younger, like, left-leaning crowd, uh, and it's like, dude, we got bigger fish to fry, you know what I mean? Like, you guys need, you guys are, you guys are mostly on the same page, and that is honestly why the left loses a lot is because there's so many different, like, factions. Whereas if you look at the right, like, they just rally behind stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, you're into QAnon? So are we, man. Let's go for it. And they, and, and they, and they get all in. Uh, like, that ridiculous grifter Topher Town music on TikTok. He has, like, a number one song in the country. Because conservatives, they just back their people. And that's how they're able to you know, fund all this stuff and all this propaganda, things like Turning Point USA, uh, you know, those are able to, you know, keep going and stay afloat because if somebody, you know, they, it, they just got to have the core tenets. If you're basically all in with the core tenets of what their side thinks, they're behind you. You get a follow, you get a like, you know, a whatever. 
Like on the left, it's just, and that's why, honestly, there is left wing grifters, don't get me wrong, but there's just not nearly as many left wing grifters because it's, it's not a profitable grift. Just really not. Like you really have to actually believe in the shit you talk about for the most part. Just stream where the surfs just did a stream. I love the surf where they were yelling about Jimmy Dore talking about AOC and then they watched what Dore was doing these days. Yeah, no, Jimmy Dore, man, I, I, I feel he's kind of, I really didn't like the thing he said about AOC. Like, oh, I made you, I made you AOC. It's like, no, you didn't, Jimmy. Uh, and, and Jimmy, I don't know, he has this weird, he has some weird takes sometimes. Like, I'm all for, like, pushing back on the left, but he takes it to, like, this weird place sometimes, and I think he just does it to try to stand out. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of, like, uh, like that those on those bigger like lefty YouTubers and stuff. There's a lot of agreement, and I think Jimmy just likes to be like the loud barking dog. Like, no, 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 we, you know, fuck the squad. Uh, it's like what? No, like those are the that's the best. Those are the best people we've we've had in office in forever. Like, yeah, they're not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Like AOC isn't above criticism, but you know, let's let's pick our battles a little more. Like, I, I just think, you know, it's an, e like, it's an easy grift to just be like, oh, no, you should, you know, fight for Medicare for all no matter what. It's like, well, okay, yeah, but it's not that easy, though. Like, I just, the first thing we need to do is get these $2,000 checks out. You know, people need money, uh, and we're, we're, like, and then, you know, we, we can push for other things. I don't know, I'm just so... I'm so black pilled with the with the establishment left that I have a hard time thinking anything's gonna happen. Doreen is a shill, yeah. I would I would say yeah. Jimmy's probably the the worst. He's one of the worst on the left. I think I I don't know. I think he just does more harm than good. Honestly, overall, I'm not complete. Like you know, I I've watched Jimmy in the past, and I I agree with some of the stuff he says, but. I don't know. I feel like it's more for show than anything. With a boogaloo boy. Yeah, what was yeah, I I didn't I don't know enough to comment on that, but I seen uh bits and pieces of people talking about him doing an interview with the boogaloo people, which I really don't understand. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm upset about the fourteen hundred too. And get this, the, the instead of two thousand, now it's down to fourteen hundred, and they're talking maybe maybe March or something. You know, like Jen Psaki was asked at the press conference today, and they're saying like, oh well, we're hoping to get something done by March. It's like, dude, why why March? Like you like you like now you have all the power right now. It's been a week. I understand Trump, you know, put you in a bad spot. But this is like the easiest layup, the easiest layup in the world. Like Republicans are getting shit from all ends. Their party's crumbling. They might split into two. You have 10 Republicans on the record saying they would support $2,000 checks. Like this would be the, like uh, th this by itself might carry Dems to the midterms. If they could get, you know, the optics of passing $2,000 checks, get Republicans in there. Sign, sign the bill, you know, photo op, whole world knows about it, bam. But, you know, can't do that. You know, and then there was a report in the Politico playbook, which is like, you know, the Bible, basically, of Insider Washington, saying that the Dems were flat-footed. They weren't ready to pass legislation. Like, the only one that was ready, basically, was Bernie Sanders. Day one, Bernie Sanders laid out a strong agenda. And I'm not just like some Bernie stan. But he's the only one I've heard talk about a strong, co you know, a strong agenda. You know what I mean? Nice stream. Thanks again, Drive. No problem. No problem. But, yeah, anyway. But, uh, all right, yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to bounce out of here, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to the stream. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you could give me a like on the way out. Uh, like I said, all my stuff's in the description. If you want to follow me on Twitch, I'd really appreciate that. You can subscribe to me on Twitch. That way you get ad-free. Uh, and you get emojis. And, 
yeah, join the Discord. Uh, in the Discord, I have like a a section where I do like daily Q news and then news of the day, and then I have a section that talks about uh, like different ways to like talk to people that are involved in conspiracies. I have a thing where you can share like your QAnon story. Uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So all that's down in the description. Uh, yeah, just thank you guys so much. Like, I think it's, yeah, it's so awesome that, like, anybody would want to hang out and watch my stream. And we have, like, all these cool, chill people that, uh, like, I, like, literally see the same faces, like, every time I stream. And, like, I appreciate that so much. Like, I really, really do. But, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And, uh, 